Hello, Namaskara. I am Neha and this is Tanushka. And a very warm welcome to all of you. For, and a very heartful thank you to everyone for taking their time out to celebrate 25 years of Center for Budget and Policy Studies. Um, this conference is the first event we are holding in a series of other public lectures that we have planned through the year to mark our 25th anniversary. And as you all know, the theme for this uh, two-day conference is institutions and public policy. And the main idea behind this theme is you know, to engage with the idea of uh, institutions and public policy and the interrelationships between the two. Uh, so we have very topical thematic sessions and we have five main themes for these two days. So uh, we have uh, some of our themes are independent institutions and public discourse. We have gender and public, uh, public spaces, education as a public good, uh, public finance and governance, and health and social security. So we all hope that we have a very engaging two days and we get to learn a lot from each other and get to know about each other's body of work. And so we encourage a lot of debates discussions, conversations, and maybe a little bit of fights also. <laughs> <laughs> the journey of CBPS for the last 25 years would not have been possible without the support and efforts of many. And we would like to take this opportunity to specially thank our society mem members, including those who are present right here. Amongst many of them have been with CBPS from the year of its inception. We would like to acknowledge their presence with a small token of thanks. Vinod Vyasalu, sir. M.S. Shriram. Founding member of Virusha Kota Indira. Whoever is it? We take him in the name. Shobita, you have to take Shobita. Shobita Rajgopal. Varna. Sarojini Ganju Thakur. MS Ram Prasada. Anita Ratnam. Indira Should I announce we'd like a loud chair of applause for all the society members? Uh, we would like all of you to applause and have like give a good cheers to all the society members. DP Vani. V. Shekhar Appa. We would also like to offer a token of thanks to our speakers who have taken out their time to be with us. Ma'am Aruna Roy. Jaina Kothari. Okay. Envy Vargas. <laughs> Sham Menon. Siddharth Vardarajan. <laughs> Sh 
शांता सिन्हा ऋषिकेश टी कृष्णन सुधीर कृष्ण स्वामी Uh, now we call upon our director Jyotsna Jha to take you through a small presentation about CBPS and our journey. All of them are not there, na? She said evening. Sorry, you guys are not doing any cooking. She said they'll be there in the evening. Who? Avni Kapoor, where he came from. No, Avni is here. So okay. Yeah. I'm so sorry, uh, Avni Kapoor. Rohit, no. 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 Roh
remit and not ours and uh, mm, and we regularly you know uh, uh, rotate our our board membership and then a whole lot of practices which we consider good governance and we have learned a lot from each other everyone brings uh, that and that i will also take to uh, the organization as such as you will see that we have quite a young team some of us you know a small number have been there for long years and many uh, younger team keep you know they come they work for two years three years go away for their phd's or change of job but uh, i think and i say it very genuinely that there is an element of learning there is a learn an element of evolution so we all you know we discuss things we encourage everyone to uh, mm, speak critique so there is that element and suddenly someone new comes and points out something which we had not realized for years and we suddenly feel that you know this guy is right he is pointing out something which doesn't suit our own vision our own commitments we must change so there is an element of evolution and therefore uh, there's nothing like you know we have arrived so obviously you know it will go on but there there are elements of a learning evolving organization and that i think is 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 what keeps us there we we continuously enjoy that engage with that and that that's something i find very uh, positive and encouraging so uh, yeah so one of the things we this also uh, it's not only about the fact that we you know we are a group of uh, people coming from different disciplines uh, as you will hear evening professor vyasulu uh, our founder director will be talking about especially the you know starting and other first few years decade and a little more but uh, mm, that now it's much more multidisciplinary as compared to say the uh, first decade but it's not only about that we are also very genuinely and i don't know how successfully but very genuinely trying to explore uh, mixed methods with much more rigor and depth we we don't want to you know write uh, our uh, research reports where uh, qualitative i'm showing uh, you know pointing out to nivi because she leads our qualitative work that qualitative comes as quotes and you know as number you know that that's a very common thing that you put some quotes and that becomes qualitative we want to deeply engage with qualitative with deep ethnographic work and also rigorous quantitative so we are trying i won't say you know how successful or not but there is there is an effort to make mixed method uh, a reality in terms of both rigor and trying to understand the problem uh, using these with much a uh, greater depth and therefore i think both the fact that you have multiple disciplines and multiple uh, 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 ways and techniques to look at that helps uh, we do evaluations of all kinds process formative impact um, and uh, like uh, perhaps various other organizations and they are represented here uh, we engage with different kinds of uh, people call them stakeholders that's the going language um researchers government uh, people academia civil society uh, media uh, communities so and communities of you know different uh, kinds and regions so we do uh, make an effort to understand all these are the usual uh, domain areas they don't you know they don't cover all the domain areas we work in but uh, some of the major ones and uh, different kind of uh, research outputs these are uh, some of our covers they are all outside may you may have seen those uh, coming in this is more uh, it was difficult actually because you know the numbers we have not really kept a very good track of numbers so this was the minimum number we thought we have so uh, we put it there uh, we do uh, write opinion pieces and uh, other ways we try to engage we have actually a rich collection of documentaries uh, which we have made as part of various research projects right from beginning last 25 years and uh, we have a youtube channel where all all of those can be viewed uh, <coughs> some of the examples of our media ah yes 
so this is a this is this is something of a joke in uh, cvps because uh, we have faced this a lot since we are located in a state we hear this a lot that are you you know do you have national presence and uh, are you a karnataka institution do you really have any uh, uh, work outside karnataka and this is something we uh, mm, i mean i can if if i have time i'll add a story actually so once we were doing a project where we were supposed to organize a national workshop which we did in bangalore and then our funder said that uh, no but there was no workshop in delhi so we said but we did a national workshop people from all states came where we did this project and they engaged and we had a good but it was not in delhi so you know it went on and i said suppose we did it in delhi and only the people residing in delhi came will you still call it national so what is national is something so we keep asserting that we are a bangalore based national uh, institution so <laughs> that's the reason we are showing the states where we have uh, done our uh, research which includes northeast um uh, yes we uh, network you know the idea is that you remain also important to be you know network because we are small since we are small we are not a university or we are not a big you know institution where we have 100 faculty or something like that it remains important also for our you know people young researchers so that you are aware of the work that's going on the kind of ideas the kind of uh, uh, mm, mm, things that are happening in the world of public policy and budgets and and other uh, domain areas where we are active um so we do participate in conferences uh, wherever we find a place um we are part of uh, various uh, uh, i'll say networks and associations like uh, say sape south asian association for poverty alleviation uh, 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 eradication or uh, uh, avid or uh, uh, there are many others actually where we are members of that also helps us because th you know these are associations of different kinds of organizations and not only research there are many activist organizations there there are many so it helps us to connect and again understand the ideas the understand the uh, issues that uh, uh, you know people are engaged with uh, we have a diverse uh, uh, set of funders and uh, there again i think it's important in terms of even um, power equation it 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 helps to have a diverse set of uh funders rather than heavily depend on one or two uh so we do kind of make a conscious effort uh to have that and we also you know we we work quite a lot with partners and uh we when when people ask us you know we, for many civil society partners we actually you know it's not that we have uh we don't work like a consultancy organization in terms of having a particular fee or something it depends you know if if we are competing and uh, uh then of course we you know we we are bidding and we put put in what we have but there are many uh, studies that we do uh, when approached by uh, partners whose work we value we uh, not that i'm not saying that money doesn't matter because we have been dependent we have no core funding yet money is not the uh, uh, the consideration that decides what work we take and that that we have retained despite uh, having certain years which were not so good financially we have retained that and i think it has worked well it should work well in future also uh these are our society members who come from different uh, walks of life extremely important their support uh, many of them could not be here some for for variety of reasons um young researchers i you know we do think and this is not only kind of uh, uh, some of us who are say, senior deciding but this uh, we have heard from a lot of our young colleagues that they do think this is a good place to learn and and that's something we uh, value and uh, mm, we want to retain that and it's not only about acknowledging their contributions but a lot of training a lot of 
you know learning happens it's mutual but i think we do create a lot of opportunities for younger people to learn uh, research better and uh, uh, and uh, we feel quite i mean we think this is one of our strength and um, we are doing something actually tomorrow we at this time we as part of our 25th anniversary we uh um, called for uh, research fellowship application so we and we also wanted to go younger we have hired only masters plus so far and uh, for a variety of reasons we thought that and people are joining actually work younger and people want to have some kind of uh, uh, work experience after undergrad so we actually called for uh, uh, applications from undergraduate and we got very good applications so we have identified five of them and we'll be announcing their names tomorrow in the closing uh, session uh, it's a one year thing that they we are and we hope that we will be able to continue with that fellowship in future as well um this is just a brief and i'll end there just wanted to uh, 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 you know share that uh, how we responded to pandemic because also again it's important in terms of you know uh, as as an institution and especially as an institution that is not necessarily backed by a lot of money so uh, mm, when when the pandemic came when you are surviving on projects it it was it was difficult in terms of money it was not easy because all the funders all our projects got extension but you know that that was extension for submission of work but Uh, uh all your team is there you know you have to sustain it's not it's not coming with money so uh what we did that i mean apart from the fact that and that many other organizations did i know you also did uh, which is that uh, no cut in salaries and and those kinds uh, but uh, mm, uh, uh, so we didn't do that we we retained all our uh, uh, um, staff we paid them full salaries but we also responded to some of the needs that emerged so for example we uh, mm, mm, conducted studies using actually uh, a number of civil society partners in in uh, different states like uh, up bihar telangana uh, mm, delhi was also part and assam actually was a major partner uh, um, looking at impact of covid in on lives livelihoods education and then we uh, uh, mm, we were we had an uh, ongoing action research project in bihar and it was school based project which you know got disrupted because of school closure so we started and we also our study that i talked about the this study that uh, we did in different states uh, told us that the reach of uh, uh, um, um, online is extremely extremely limited you know we we say less than 10 but we found that certain states like bihar where we were working it was only 1 to 2% isn't it so it was very low and therefore we came up with this idea of sending postcards and for we retained it for 50 weeks yeah, 50, cards. Huh? 50 cards and spread over not 50 weeks but spread over one and a half years uh, that we continuously send them send them learning materials in the shape of cards through post we collaborated with postal department it was difficult we are not an implementing organization so you know continuously working on those resources designing them and everything we did in house hindi you know not many of us know hindi well uh, so that was an issue and uh, so but we did it in house some of us like younger people are better in designing some of us worked on content and some of us our admin uh, colleagues took risks even when there were closures all these uh, lockdowns went to post office and and posted them on regular basis and that side also we you know tried to work with uh, teachers postal department and so that was something we thought was important and uh, and it worked well because it we you know we actually turned it into uh, also a toolkit of emergency in education we worked with school system bihar government took it and then we worked with that we also uh, did one study on macroeconomic impact of uh, covid in chatisgarh and uh, mm, then we also uh, organized a series of webinars on on uh, different kinds there was also something else yes this one i forgot so we have you know like we have uh, our researchers now they have just this month they have come back to bangalore but for last one and a half years we had embedded 
uh, ethnographers in two states, Telangana and Rajasthan, with two institutions. So when COVID came, their work also got affected. These two institutions that we were working with, Dusra Dashak and Bhumika Women's Collective. Bhumika is uh, represented here, Prashanti is here. Uh, so uh, mm, what we did that their work also and they also responded they also stopped their usual work and started responding to covid in different ways even if their regular work was not relief they got engaged in relief and various other things actually look and and whatever their vantage points were you know bhumika works in a particular manner dusra dashak in has a very different orientation but what we uh, did that our researchers embedded there we asked them to uh, document that process and we analyzed that process to look at you know how civil society works and responds in, in an emergency so we kind of use those opportunities to do some meaningful research um, did a series of webinars on different aspects we also did a study on migration we we uh, this we used our own research fund actually we have a small research fund, the surplus years we create, thanks to our board members who advised and we have done that. So uh, we uh, did a small study, actually. We started that before pandemic, and because of the pandemic, it stopped. So then we, you know, we did a second round, and we uh, analyzed that. We looked at uh, the entire uh, lives and access to public services and uh, livelihood situation of migrant labor who work in Bangalore. So we use the Bangalore city. It was, it was a 500 uh, uh, households based study. So uh, this is just to say that, you know, how we responded, that's just a glimpse of how we work. Um, so this conference, and this conference, as you know, that it's on institutions and public policy, and Neha has introduced it. Um, one of the major things that we uh, uh, want to do here uh, is again connect diverse kinds of experience and expertise and learn from that you know each one perhaps all of us participating here and similarly the themes also so experiences are different of, of different kinds of organizations and not only those who are participating uh, in our panel discussion or our speakers but others as well you know I can see here many people who are running institutions of very different kinds and have those experiences and will be good if you know their contributions also come to uh, uh, the stage and uh, and also the different domain areas there are certain things that are common you know across for example we you know we uh, if we explore education if we explore gender so we have gender experts but we also do a lot of public finance work so we are doing for example this project that we have gender in public space where we are doing ethnographic work, we are also doing in-depth gender budgeting work, trying to reconceptualize gender budgeting differently. So, so those kinds, so even that connection, and also established and young scholars. Uh, uh, see, since again, since we are not a university and, and that kind of institution, we rarely uh, uh, go for, you know, bringing young in our workshops, we call established uh, 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 scholars. We rarely call young scholars. So this time we thought we will do that also. So we had a call for papers and we have young scholars here who are participating. So idea is again connect uh, that as well. So uh, we are hoping that these two days will be extremely uh, enriching, thought-provoking, good experience that we all take back. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>